it was early on in my career that I first heard the term feral resonance and I've been fascinated by it ever since. The reason I am so fascinated by it is because there's been very few people, if any, that have been able to properly explain it to me. If you ask an engineer what feral resonance is, they'll look at you and kind of cringe. The reason they cringe is because they can't define it mathematically. Engineers hate that. Anyway, I've been continuing to study the subject and try to figure out exactly what it is, how to predict it, and whether or not it can be created. And through a lot of research, studying, and trial and error, I have been able to successfully reproduce it in the lab, which is kind of cool. Simply put, feral resonance is a condition where the inductance of a transformer or a transformer bank falls into resonance with the capacitance that's feeding it. The capacitance in the case of a distribution lineman often comes from the shunt capacitance introduced by underground URD cable. This is the type of cable we use to feed our underground circuits. The inductance comes from the transformers, the three-phase transformers that we use to convert the electricity to a lower voltage. Couple things that are necessary for ferro resonance to be possible in a circuit is the transformer banks have to be wired delta on the primary, or at least they should be, and the cable runs that feed the transformer banks need to be long enough such that they develop an appreciable amount of capacitance. So where does that leave us? Well. The interesting thing about a transformer's ability to create a magnetic field is that the amount of electrical current necessary to create that field is not linear. What this means is that when you fire a transformer up and introduce it to an electrical energy source, the magnetic field it needs to create has to start from nothing oftentimes. And so you get something called a surge current, which basically flows through the primary coil of the transformer and saturates the iron core. And that's the key component. During saturation, and we're only talking about a very small period of time, maybe on the order of a few milliseconds, the inductive component of the transformer is fairly low. And what that means is that the impedance it offers reactively to the circuit is also low because inductance and impedance are directly proportional. The issue I had with trying to create this circuit in the lab was that although I do have an inductive component within the transformers to use to fill that requirement, I don't have any capacitive components because this is a basically an overhead circuit. It's modeled after an overhead transformer bank and the bars, the bus bars up here, do not hold any inherent capacitance within them. Another issue that was affecting the recreation of this phenomenon in the lab is that the voltages I'm working with in here are not really sufficiently high enough such that the capacitive reactants involved with the source of feed can come into play effectively. If you're talking about an underground circuit being fed by, let's say, three conductors of one out of thousand feet long, you may only be looking at a couple hundred nanofarads of capacitance. And in this case, because our voltages up top are much lower, they're 120 Y, we need a higher value of capacitance to kick this effect into action. There's a lot going on when you try to re recreate this phenomenon and it really expands beyond the ability of a simple video to explain but I'm going to try to get through the basics of it. I know that it's possible to create in this environment because I've done it and what I've essentially done is I've taken the transformers that I have here and instead of wiring them with a Y primary I've wired them with a delta primary so that the phase legs coming off the primary bushings are going to an opposite phase up above.
eh, kind of a bad way of explaining it. Phase-to-phase relationships. If this were outside in the real world, all that would mean is that we're dealing with 12.5 kV instead of 7200, and we have no relationship to neutral or ground at the top of this uh, transformer bank. For the component of capacitance, after playing around with it for a little while, I found out that if I add somewhere in the neighborhood of 21 to 22 microfarads of capacitance to each phase, I can create a circuit whereby when the transformers are energized and they temporarily saturate for that short period of time, the capacitance begins to resonate with the value of instantaneous inductance of the transformer core. Now the interesting thing about this phenomenon is that because it follows chaos theory, it's not always reproducible at will. And this is kind of one of the things, I guess, that makes it a ghost phenomenon. You can go to a transformer bank out in the real world and do all the wrong things, which means doing the things necessary to bring this demon to life, and you'll never see it, even though all the conditions are there to bring it about. And then one day you go out there and you do the exact same thing, and the whole thing blows up on you. And there's no way to tell whether or not that's going to happen. It's really just a matter of all of the millions of different variables that come into play at that given instant and what it decides to do when you energize it. The level of voltage that we see across the top of these transformers from phase to ground should be 120 volts. Because we have them wired delta, the voltage between the primary bushings is 208. When I create a circuit that causes one or more of these transformers to go into resonance with the capacitance of the source that's feeding it, the voltage from a resonating transformer to ground or neutral can double, triple, or quadruple in magnitude. That's really giving us the characteristics of what this problem does. And I call it a problem because it's, it's never desirable in the field. You get ferro resonance out in the field, you end up burning up equipment, blowing arresters and fuses, and causing all sorts of problems. So it's not a desirable phenomenon. But really a couple of the things you need to do to create it, and the one that I think is the biggest culprit is single phase de-energizing or switching or energizing for that matter of three phase equipment which is fed delta from an underground circuit. So I've got this transformer bank energized. The phase to ground voltage from a primary bushing of any given transformer is 120 volts. We also have, because the transformers are up and running and the magnetizing current is stabilized, a very minimal amount of electrical current or amperage flowing into the primary coils to keep those cores magnetized. We have no load on the secondaries. Another key, uh, key component is that there's no load on the secondaries, which would otherwise act as a dampening coefficient to the resonance that we're trying to create. So no load on the secondaries, delta wire primary, and single phase switching. When we create the phenomena, what we're gonna see is that there's gonna be a significant voltage rise in the phase to ground or phase to neutral relationship between the primary bushings and the system neutral. And we're also gonna see, because of that rise, an increase in the current flowing through the primary coil of transformer. Both those things are bad. These are supposed to be high impedance devices and when you have high voltage uh, potential and current flowing through the primary coil, that suggests you have low impedance, which is exactly what's being created by the resonance. So, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and try to uh, stir up the beast and see if we can waken it. This'll probably indicate itself immediately by 
a large hum or an audible noise, a rattling noise, which is going to come out of any of the transformers that are affected by the resonance. I'm going to just begin by opening and closing these switches one at a time until such time all the conditions are right and this thing will kick off and you should be able to hear that. And there it is. If we take a voltage reading from the phase to the ground, what you now see is that the, vol the voltage is significantly higher. And if we take an amperage reading across that primary bushing, we notice that there's a significant amount of amperage, almost three amps flowing through the primary coil of this transformer, which is well in excess of the, I guess it would be 10 to 100 milliamps that normally flows the magnetizer coil. But we're going to remove that resonance because even though it is controlled, it's really not good for the cores of these transformers. But there you go, and I think that's pretty cool. That is a, uh, a phenomenon which has uh, eluded a lot of people in their ability to understand and explain. I've seen it once out in the field, and it was kind of a very strange event, and it would not have been predictable by any means, but when it, when it happened, the transformer we were switching on, and we were switching with, uh, with elbows, began to growl and rumble. Uh, pretty violently to the point where I was almost ready to drop the stick and run. Uh, we went ahead and energized the rest of the phases and the resonance went away. And in that particular case, I don't think there was any harm done. But anyway, it's pretty cool. Uh, and I'm really happy that it provided me the opportunity to expose it in this, in this controlled environment, so to speak. So that's all.